Pat, um, I, I've, I've looked through your the links you provided in your latest video, and um, do do you just put a bunch of them in there to kind of throw people off the scent, or are I mean, do you sincerely think that these links actually establish your case for you? Because you have a number of links in here, and I can't go through them all, but uh, there's only um, three that I can see here, and I may be missing one more, but pertinent to your case, and it's the FBI hate crimes, hate crimes in New York and hate crimes in California. Those relate to the, the case you're making. And maybe I misunderstood, but allow me to sort of put it this way. It seems to me that you're saying that Islamophobia isn't real and that uh, Muslims are welcomed here in the, in, in the United States. And so um, everyone's just being uh, hysterical about the reaction to or everyone's be behaving hysterically when they say Islamophobia, and then you go on to explain that there's a creeping jihad, you know, which is Islamophobic. Now, it's not an ideal word, but it perfectly encapsulates the xenophobic beha behavior of people like yourself. Okay, it's the fear that citizens in our countries respectively are not behaving in good faith, that they are trying to undermine our, our governments, they're trying to destroy our cultures. That's a serious charge, Pat, and you keep making it, and others like you keep making it, and what I want to know is where is your evidence? Because I've looked at your sources and they don't make your case. You have here a link to humanevents.com which is a conservative magazine. And there's nothing wrong with a conservative magazine, but it's a magazine that's basically not news. It's just editorial. Okay, it has things in it like, um, I was looking at their front page just a little while ago. It has an article, um, What if the Bible's Really True? by David Limbaugh. It has an article by Chuck Norris, Pat. It has an article by Chuck Norris. Okay, it has several articles by Chuck Norris. This is not serious journalism, and it's one of your sources. Sight and Sound is another one of your sources. Um, the Invention of Islamophobia. The first paragraph gives away a very specific agenda. Okay, it claims, without citation, that the term Islamophobia originates after the Islamic Revolution. I've never heard that anywhere except here. This is the first time I've heard it, and I've never seen a source for that, not here or anywhere else. Okay, it also then claims that Islamophobia is meant to imply that anything critical of Islam is racism. Well, that's not, that's a straw man from their point of view. And if you're saying you agree with it, then you're straw manning me and millions of other people who understand Islamophobia to mean fear of Muslims, fear of them coming into our community, fear of them not doing the Western things that we want them to do. And I'm not talking about laws, I'm talking about cultural things. Okay? I, yeah, I expect people who come to our country from somewhere else to adopt a certain respect for the, the, the rule of law and, and the law of the land. And I agree with anyone who wants to say, if, the, if there's a sizable community of people that are thumbing their nose at the law, they need to be told, look, this is our country. Okay? If you're going to live here, if you're going to become a citizen here, you're going to have to adopt these things. You can't butt heads with us endlessly over the law. But these are civil liberty issues, and they have nothing to do with the fact that every, everyone who comes here has a right to their privacy, you know, their own space, their own religious ideas, their beliefs. As long as they don't infringe on other people's rights, and as long as they are abiding by the law, they have a place here. That's the beauty of America. It's a, a country built entirely on immigration. Uh, but here's the thing that I really wanted to get to. And it's it's your it's your link to the New York Times and the uh, I'm sorry the, the 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 Washington Times and the New York Post, because you have the same exact book review. Um, the book review is for just a transparent polemic, a right wing screed. But the thing that's interesting is that it's written by Peter Hannaford. Peter Hannaford, for people who don't know 
is a um, is an, a whole old school cold warrior. Okay, I mean he basically this is from Source Watch, and I'll put a link to it. Peter Hannaford was briefly the chair of the 2004 incarnation of the Committee on the Present Danger, a Cold War era group that fa was first founded in 1950 and reformed in 1976 to push for larger defense budgets and arms buildups to counter the Soviet Union. Okay, most of us who've been following the war on terror for the last 10 years, most of us who give a damn and actually try to find out what the war what's going on in the world, uh, have already figured out that this war on terror is t meant entirely to replace the Cold War for a lot of people. Okay, that's not to suggest there isn't a threat of terrorism. Okay, but there is a misconception among the population of the United States and of Great Britain, to some degree. There's a misconception about what we what the war on terror really is. It's a way to, to cement the control of the military-industrial complex further. Okay, after the Cold War sort of unraveled, people lost that fire in the belly, you know, for this, you know, this terrifying danger, you know. But now we have it again. Um, I'm, not, I, I'm not alone in this. There's, there, there are many people who've, who've basically pointed out that the fear of terrorism in the West is overblown, and it's done on purpose. It's done to manipulate the masses so that they will vote for a very crass, cynical, political elite who want power. I suggest anybody who hasn't seen it already go look up The Power of Nightmares. It's a BBC documentary, I believe. It's a series, and it's very interesting. And you can... Once again, using a newspaper, <clears throat> you can go back and look to see if it's accurate, if they get their facts right. Now, you may not agree with the narrative, but that's fine. But Peter Hannaford, man, you, you, you have two links to different papers for the exact same book review. It's not even an editorial, it's just a book review, and it doesn't even review the book. It just basically rambles on in a way that you do. But Peter Hannaford was actually let go from the CPD. He was let go, again, from Sourcewatch, after Laura Rosen reported that he lobbied for the Austrian Freedom Party. Now, anybody who's not familiar with them, they sh you should be aware, the Austrian, Austrian Freedom Party is a far-right, some have accused of being white nationalist, political party in Austria. They're, they're, they make the BNP look like bleeding-heart liberals. So, Pat, all I can say is you're getting all of your sources from editorials. And all of your editorials are conservative and or far right. You are not exactly impartial. You are not exactly Im unbiased here. And that's all.